Shalom. This is uh, July the 7th, 2022, here in Jerusalem, and I've just been observing so many things that have been going on, and I don't know, it may be foolish to try and cover a whole bunch of them briefly. Will there be enough understanding? I'm not sure, but I just wanted to put out some ideas there and and things that people can pray about and and be watchful for in the spirit because some very serious things are happening and they all appear to be pointing to that one direction that we're coming into a real world government that will be ruled by someone we all know by as the, the title the beast the antichrist the anti-messiah the man of sin so I, I just want to touch on a few things so you can you can just continue to seek the lord I'm not going to tell you how to pray, but the Lord will. The Holy Spirit it says and when we know not how to pray, he'll show us how to pray in the spirit and even in a, a comprehensible language as he gives us revelation. So just, you know, on, in, here in Israel, we've seen some dramatic changes recently. In June, in the month of June, we saw the Israeli government come to a place of great volatility. They no longer had a majority, and the writing appeared to be on the wall that this government's going to fall. And, you know, it was like most people in the government, and most people that, that are aware of things that are happening in Israel knew that it would fall at some point. And, you know, some, one of the primary things that activated this, the, the, the demise of this current government was that when Israel first, in the 67 war, took back Judea, Samaria, and Gaza, and Jerusalem, they put it under military rule which was our first sign, but not most people weren't watching, that the future plans for this land were not what everybody have thought they were going to be, but we were actually entering into an era that was cultivating a time of some great distress in the future. This great distress is not going to happen by coincidence. It's going to be happening by design. And so they put Judea and Samaria under military rule. But because there were more and more and more Jewish people living out there, they, they instituted a program, a law that would recognize the Jewish people living out in, in Judea and Samaria, Samaria as Israeli citizens entitled to pensions and medical service and all the things that a, an Israeli citizen would receive, even though they were living in a military zone. Israel refused to declare sovereignty over that land, which was evil in itself, but that's a whole other subject. <clears throat> and every five years, the Knesset has voted to renew that piece of legislation that recognizes the Jewish people that live out there as being citizens of Israel and beneficiaries of all of the, of being a part of the state of Israel, even though it was never made sovereign. And so here we were a year ago, a government was formed. And in order for that government to be formed, they brought in some a number of Muslim members of Knesset, which are in total opposition of that land out there ever becoming part of Israel. And they were now in a position where they could prevent that kind of legislation from being reinstated for another five years. 
which brought us to a so-called crisis. But the crisis was well known before the government was ever formed, that those Muslims would never ever vote in favor. So we're looking at a planned collapse of the government, in my view. And it, it's rather obvious if you begin to look a little bit beneath the surface that everybody knew, Netanyahu and all of the people that are currently now in opposition, knew it was coming. And it was it would be viewed as a great betrayal <clears throat> if they allowed this legislation to be defeated. So instead, they dissolved the government. But there was a number of other pieces that were ready to fit in place as well. And, you know, some of it, I think, lines up with scripture. So the government voted to dissolve itself in June. And on July the 1st, a man named Lapid, it was Lapid and Bennett that put together the current government. And they agreed to share the, their, the position of being prime minister, two years to Bennett first and two years to Lapid. <clears throat> Bennett lasted one year, knew he would never be reelected because he began to surrender land to our enemies in massive amounts, giving billions of dollars to our sworn enemies the Muslim community, and he created a number of enemies that said, we'll never vote for you. That's why he stepped down and he's out of politics altogether, at least temporarily. And Lapid now, instead of waiting for another year, was made a caretaker prime minister because the government had dissolved. But in the interim between now and November the 1st, when the next election is, Lapid will be like a caretaker prime minister, can what exactly can he do and how far can he take things? I think we've got some big surprises ahead. You know, that was uh, July the 1st, Lapid was sworn in as a prime minister. And uh, he was the 14th prime minister. And you know, when they announced that our new Prime Minister Lapid was number 14, it triggered something in me and, and it reminded me of Matthew chapter 1 verse 17. And it's uh, the royal genealogy of Yeshua is being summarized in that one verse that there was three sets of 14 generations that brought us to the place of seeing Yeshua's lineage directly tied to King David and its royalty. And, you know, often over the years, I would wonder why did God break it down into three segments of 14? And, you know, each one of those 14s represent an era in time, you know, from and I haven't got scripture here in front of me, but I just want you to take a look because the num the 14 in scriptures is in a number of places. It outlines and delineates time period. Like Jacob, he served for his two wives, even though he only bargained for one, a total of 14 years. Passover is held on the 14th day of Nisan. And there's many other examples, but you can search a scripture, it won't be that hard, and you'll start to begin to understand. But Matthew 1.17, God deliberately breaks it up into three different segments of 14s, which comes to 42 generations. <clears throat> and I believe God was showing us that 14 was a number that was relevant in eras and in, in seasons of time. That in this case, in Matthew led up to the identity of Yeshua and his genealogy, connecting him to the royalty of Israel, the royalty of God. 
So Lapid became the 14th prime minister on July the 1st. And it's God was saying and showing us something if we could only just take a peek behind the curtain and see what it is he was saying. But what happened like five days later after he took on that position? He began to do things that were very obvious, going to be detrimental to the existence of the state of Israel for the coming days. His first five days later, he enacts a freeze on construction in Judea and Samaria, something that many presidents of the United States have demanded and asked for, including Donald Trump and Israel. Even though they did impose a freeze, they did it unofficially. On the surface, they made it appear to the Israeli citizens that no, we're not going to freeze construction, but they actually did. But this time, Lapid, our 14 prime minister, officially enacted a freeze on all construction in Judea and Samaria. The implication is, is that we're not really authorized and should ever be building out there because that land belongs to somebody else, which is contrary to scripture. Because God says it's all his. It doesn't even belong to the people of Israel. And so I believe we were shown within five days of him becoming prime minister, the direction he's going to take Israel in. And why did he do it? As a gesture for the visit of Biden, which is coming up in less than two weeks. The President of the United States is coming here and he's made it clear his primary motivation for coming is to help facilitate the division of the land and the creation of a Palestinian state. And you know, it's interesting that Biden and Trump are viewed as globally as severe opponents to one another and enemies of one another. Yet shortly after Biden took his office, he said, we're going to continue the implementation of the Abrahamic Accords that Donald Trump initiated, which was to, you know, help Israel make friends with their so-called enemies. And they're not so-called, they're vicious enemies. Their agenda and their, their, their doctrine makes it clear that Israel has no right to exist. That has not changed, but they've learned how to lie to the masses in a way that looks oh so convincing. But if you look at, you know, scriptures like Zechariah, <clears throat> where it talks about, I mean, it's 13, 8, and 9, that two thirds of the nation are going to be cut off. You know, how is that going to happen? We're not given that detail. But we see other places in Zechariah and other places in the scripture that her enemies are going to do something terrible. And that's another great big story in itself. When the Abrahamic Accords are leading somewhere. You know, it was a mockery of the, uh, the, the covenant or the accord that God made with, with Abraham when he said, I'll give you this land forever as an eternal possession to you and all of your descendants. Donald Trump said, uh, <clears throat> we're going to change that. We're going to use the same name, but we're changing the Abrahamic Accord. And we're going to say we're giving it to the Muslims. We're going to split it up and give them some of it. And, uh, you know, I did a video and I sent a copy of it to Donald Trump, warning him before the last election that if you pursue the division of the land of Israel, which was the deal of the century, was exactly that, a proposition and a deal that would have divided Israel and made Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, the capital of a Palestinian state. I say, there's a good chance God will remove you from power. But that's not the, the central thing I want to look at right now is, 
is we see that there's this change of, of leadership in Israel is actually begun a new era like we see in those three that division of four teams and where are we going in this time I don't have all the answers matter of fact I have very few but I I believe God's allowing me to see little tiny bits and pieces I don't know exactly how they fit together as a puzzle right now and you know I just I believe it's important that people that that are prophetically inclined intercessors that have spent many hours in prayer that we begin to gather together and compare our notes that we're getting from the Holy Spirit because God is showing us something you know there was a young man his name's Chris Reed and he recently had a dream and in that dream which was quite lengthy there's one piece in particular he was handed a headline that says something to the effect of finally a peace agreement is reached for a Palestinian state to be established I know it's coming I know it it's in scripture that the land will be divided it's also in scripture what God will do to the nations that facilitate that division and it's terrible it's actually the total destruction of those nations and we are in a season where prayer not to stop because it can't be stopped if we're there it's going to happen but prayer for the souls of the people that are involved that we could reach them and 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 help them to see the person of Jesus Christ Yeshua our Messiah that's the ultimate objective here we're not going to convince God or the devil to stop what's coming it's been prophesied it's going to happen but we can rescue multitudes that are currently lost and have no hope for them for their eternal existence so you know that's the primary reason why I even do any of these videos and write the articles and you know but I see a number of things that are coming together as a result you know there's one guy says that the Democrat and Republican parties in the United States and I know almost nothing about the political arrangements there and I don't want to be political at all this video is not intended to be political but to show you some of the things that are happening that are very spiritual but this one man puts it this way that the Democrat and the Republican parties are, are the two wings of the same bird one's on the left one's on the right but they're both driving the bird in the same direction and you know I've seen evidence of that many years ago when Ariel Sharon he was he was not the most popular leader he was well liked but they saw that there was a very big drive to give up in the Gush Katif which was a big segment of Gaza that was occupied not occupied living Jewish people living there because they, it's part of Judea and the left wing were saying we're going to give it away we don't think we should stay there and Errol Sharon promised he said if you elect me I guarantee you I promise you will never be divided never be given away a year later so I made a big mistake we're going to give it away and we don't even want nothing in exchange and he turned it into a military zone wouldn't let anybody come in the protesters were were bashed and smashed and arrested and it's history now the man that said I will defend the land gave it away <clears throat> Benjamin Netanyahu has surrendered more land of Israel than any leader in the history of Israel going all the way back to Solomon who gave away 21 cities when he was the king so where are we headed in this time God knows the, the real detail but I see some things happening you know the religious are very concerned right now because of what 
what Bennett was doing as a religious man. He began to surrender land. He was giving away Area C to our sworn enemies for nothing. He was giving billions of dollars to the Muslims that live in the Negev that have been stealing land illegally for years. And he reinforced their theft of the land and gave the money to build on it. And they saw that Bennett was a, was a traitor. He was betraying the Zionist and the biblical principle that this land belongs to God. And he was giving it away to Islam. And so it's created an atmosphere in the nation here where they're desperately looking for somebody that's biblical enough that wants to protect the land. And many people see that the only, and, and they believe that the only place to go is back to Benjamin Netanyahu and a religious coalition with him. And it sure looks like that's where we're headed that he will be the prime minister once again. The elections for November the 1st, the results will be announced November the 2nd, which happens to be the anniversary of the Belfort Declaration that said this land belongs to, to Israel. We could be seeing a prime minister comes into place that's actually on that day, you'll become the official leader and then form a government to actually disband the land. But what are these religious people going to want in exchange? A lot, a lot, because they're going to have to look the other way as we create a Palestinian state, or not we, but a handful of criminals that are running the government. And they want something they've desperately been trying to get in 1997, I was here in Israel visiting. I hadn't made Aliyah yet. And the Holy Spirit very clearly spoke to me, said the day is coming where the gospel will be banned, made illegal in Israel. And the sharing of the gospel and the, and the promotion of the gospel in every which way will be banned. And people will actually begin to be persecuted severely, arrested, and even murdered because of their love and their, their proclamation of Jesus Christ. And you know what was really spooky is just a few weeks later, bang, came legislation that was promoted by the religious parties that basically would ban the gospel in Israel. And there was an outcry from the body of Christ around the world. And some of the promoters of that outcry were key individuals in government in different nations. And they were saying, don't do it, don't do it. And Israel backed down and they let that legislation die. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, it's coming. Could this be the formation of that government that's going to give great power to the religious who will ultimately, I believe, quite quickly demand legislation to ban the gospel, to persecute, arrest, and, and detain, and ultimately even murder people that stand for the name of Yeshua. He's the King of Israel. And I will do that till the end of my life. I declare him as my king and the king of this nation. He's the ultimate ruler of Israel and the whole earth, regardless of what Satan's trying to do. And so, you know, we're seeing this left right wing thing actually promoting one another. What we just had was pretty much a left-wing government, which is now pushing the people to ultimately bring up very strong in numbers, right-wing government, which will be very much controlled by the religious because without their support, the government would not even come into being. And I feel that they're going to begin to demand that right 
for legislation to ban the so-called enemies of Israel, those who love and promote and declare the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua. And you know, we may not see it. The majority right now don't see those kinds of things coming together, but they are. We see Biden actually fulfilling things that Trump initiated, the Abrahamic Accords, the, new, the deal of the century. Biden is coming here. He may call it something different, but he's coming here to divide the state of Israel. What is that? The deal of the century. And the Abrahamic Accords. You know that there's, I think I've reported on this in the past, they have built a complex in Abu Dhabi, and if there's another one planned and underway, and the complex is called the Abrahamic Family House. And the one in Abu Dhabi is this gigantic piece of land close to the sea, has three massive buildings. One is a synagogue, one is a, a church, which is going to be to some large degree cover, taken care of by the Catholics, and the other one's a mosque. And we're going to see the three religions in the Abrahamic Accords, which the Pope also endorses, begin to take on some very real physical life. And guess who? Those who truly know the word of God and speak and declare truth are going to be persecuted because we have no choice but to declare the truth of the word. There's only one way to God. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. That's not changed and it never, ever will. Islam can't take you there. Buddha can't take you there. Catholicism, which in so many ways is evil, evil to the core. Judaism, which has abandoned the God of Israel a long time ago and have taken up a religious form that man has created primarily by the rabbis over the last couple thousand years. And so we begin to see that this persecution that's coming is definitely coming. It's very real. You know, today I learned that two days ago in the United States, a man that's truly a lover of God, Torben is his last name. I forget his, his or that could be his first name. I forget, but he's an evangelist. He's been just walking in the spirit in such a profound way that he's seen multitudes come to faith, many being equipped in the spirit to do and to be who God has called him to be. <clears throat> and he, two days ago, he was arrested in the United States and charged with, with weapons, sale of weapons and guns and gun running. What a phony, phony charge. I'll tell you, in Canada, there, we still have people involved with the convoy of freedom from January of this year sitting in jail. Some people just recently arrested because they were headed for the demonstration on July the 1st, which is Canada Day. And, the, you know, the media is not saying a word about it, but the persecution of the body of Christ and the people that stand for righteousness is very much underway. Here in Israel, many <clears throat> of the re religious that stand for the land that live out in Judea and Samaria have been incarcerated, some for several months, without even the opportunity of standing for a judge and their, and their accusers. And, you know, the whole thing is intimidation and per persecution. And that's about to be extended to the body of Christ. I can see the writing on the wall. I don't know the exact timing of it. But I can see how... You know, this whole thing of left wing, right wing, both in the United States and in Canada and in Israel and in many countries, they're all walking the same path of the new world order. It's not good. 
and this is not a time to start promoting this political party or that one, and that's not what I'm doing, but it's time for the body of Christ to open her eyes. Something very real is taking place. You know, I just heard a report that in polls in the United States that there was an election today. Donald Trump would win hands down over Biden. <clears throat> no surprise. Matter of fact, I'm convinced it's part of the plan. You know, the other thing is there are many people that believe that we're in a Shemitah year right now and that a new Shemitah cycle will begin in September. I really believe that this September, there will be some very significant events take place. But I, you know, hundreds of years ago, 800 years ago, a rabbi in Germany had a prophetic word. His last name was Ben Judah. <clears throat> I published it it's on my website. I published it a couple of times because I saw that he had something. He talked about Jubilee cycles. And, you know, Jubilee cycles are made up of Shemitah cycles. Seven Shemitah cycles brings us to a Jubilee. So he said, to summarize, 1917, 1967, and 2017 were Jubilee years, which would mean that if 2017 was a Jubilee, it began a new Shemitah cycle, which would mean the next one is not this September, but it's in 2024. And uh, it just happens to be that's uh, when the next presidential election is going to take place. Are we watching something coming together? I can't say affirmatively for sure right now, but I'm convinced we are. And I'm just inviting you in prayer, not in, we're not trying to form conspiracy theories, but there are conspiracies well underway. They're very real. They're not theories. And I believe God wants us, you know, in prayer to uncover these things, to come to the understanding. Because we'll, like the, the sons of Issachar, they had understanding and they knew what to do. The body of Christ desperately needs God's understanding in this hour so that we know what to do. The enemy is subject to God never ever the other way and if we walk in God's wisdom understanding and his counsel we'll be able to not only avoid the evil that the devil's bringing upon the earth but we can actually delay it and circumvent it in many ways ultimately what is prophesied will happen you know <clears throat> There's still a great expectation that someone's going to of great influence is going to authorize the reconstruction of a temple on the Temple Mount. And I reported earlier, a, few, a couple of years, about a year ago, that the you know the the prince of Saudi Arabia, soon to be the king of Saudi Arabia, sees no problem with with a temple being built there. Something like what's going on in Abu Dhabi, that the mosque will be there and the church will have an opportunity to do something there and there'll be the temple of God. The only problem is, is the God that's going to sit in that temple is a representative of hell. He'll be hailed as a Messiah by the religious here in Israel. You know what's really frightening? As many people that go to church on Sunday are also going to acknowledge him as the greatest man. And we need the wisdom of God in this hour. And, you know, that wisdom and the knowledge of God and the truth of God only has one method of, of being transferred from A to B to C to D. And that's through love. You know, in Ephesians, it says to speak the truth in love. We're not to become critical of our enemies in a sense of 
labeling them and trying to lower them or minimize their humanity, they're deceived. They're deceived because they believe something other than the truth of the word of God. What's terrifying is that many Christians are going to also begin to say, it can't be the only truth. These guys are making sense as well. And, uh, you know, right now there are, there are many Christians that come and, and get entangled with the Orthodox. And ultimately, many of them, thousands, have renounced their faith in Jesus and converted to Judaism. Why? Because they didn't believe the ultimate truth of the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. I'll tell you the, what we call the Old Testament, the Jewish people call the Tanakh says more about Jesus and who he is in his character than the New Testament that reveals his reality for us to see with our eyes before we had to see him through the eyes of our heart. <clears throat> we live in some of the most exciting times ever. And, you know, I've, just, I've given you a whole bunch to just pray about. And I'm not prophesying this or that, but I see pieces coming together. I see this 14th Prime Minister of Israel marks a new era. And I don't think the, what it's going to spell out in the days ahead is going to be good. It's going to bring a right-wing, so-called right-wing government led by most likely Benjamin Netanyahu. And he may have a sharing deal with somebody as well, but I can see it. It's so obvious that the division of the land and Jerusalem are on the table, not only on the table, it's about to be implemented. Woe to the nation and the nations that support that. There's a, there are several people, including myself, that have prophesied that if America continues to take the leading role in dividing the state of Israel, the United States of America is going to be divided down the center of the nation on the New Madrid Fault. It would probably take the lives of as much as 60 million people in a matter of a couple of hours and devastate the nation forever. America will never ever be what she was. I don't say that to condemn or to, to prophesy that because I still see that there's an opportunity in prayer to at least rescue the people that are involved that could perish, but through our efforts in the gospel could actually be saved instead. You know, God has called me to go to Missouri several years in a row. We've gone and we've spoken to the, 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 the fault line that lies underneath the Mississippi River from the little village called New Madrid. Americans call it New Madrid, whichever way you pronounce it. It's, I really see a grand devastating event taking place if America promotes the vision of Israel. And America doesn't have to go down that road. I believe that true intercessory prayer with all earnestly, God, please save America. Change the route so we're not destroyed by this this evil act of dividing your land. This land doesn't belong to the Jewish people. I'm a Jew that was born here in Israel. I don't own this land. God does. He set it apart, this little tiny sliver in the middle of nowhere. That's all he said. This is mine. Here have I placed my name forever. Jerusalem, here have I established my throne forever. Here in Jerusalem are my foundations, I believe, even the foundations of the universe. And this little insignificant city 
that has been fought over for generations and generations. But woe to the nation that comes against God's boundaries. Woe to the nation that seeks to divide Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 9 says, he will set out to destroy those nations. We see in, in Revelation and Zechariah and Isaiah, in many of the prophets, there are nations going to be devastated through earthquakes, through natural disasters, and through war. Why? One of the key, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back is going to be how did they deal with Jerusalem? Did they honor Jerusalem? Or did they despise her and want to take it out of the hands of God? You know, there's a scripture that says that we're to pray and to give God no rest until he makes Jerusalem a praise on all the earth. I'll tell you, having a satanic ruler sitting in Jerusalem is not making Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. The throne that's here in this city, that's been established here from the very beginning, belongs to one, Yeshua, Jesus, the only Savior, not just of the Jewish people, but of the whole world. He loves us all. We, you know, in Ephesians chapter 2, he says he makes the two of us, the Jew and the Gentile, one can't do it alone. The church can't do it by herself, and Israel can't do it by herself. But the two of us, joined together, become this new man, which is Yeshua. And that one new man will be a temple built of living stones, not where God will come and visit us periodically, but where he will come and reside. He will live with us. That's kind of what we're seeing coming in the new Jerusalem. It's like a bride that's been prepared for her groom. Are we prepared? Are we standing on the truth of the God's word? Do we recognize the absolute calamity that will come by trying to take this land, even though no man will ever succeed in taking it from God? It's his and we don't have Satan, and no man has the power to take it from him. But for a short season, it's going to happen. We could be closer than you actually believe. You know, there's a, a rumor that somebody <coughs> has actually purchased a house in Jerusalem for the two witnesses because God told them, they're about to appear. They're about to come on the scene. And if you read Revelation 11, they don't come until after the Temple Mount. At least part of it, the outer court, is given to the Gentiles. Islam are Gentiles. They're not Jews in practice anyway. We're close. We're very close. So we can look up. Our redemption draw it nigh. Much closer than most of us want to acknowledge. <clears throat> if that final Shemitah begins this year, as many think it will, or if it's actually 2024, September 24, means we, by the end of the 20s, we will be at the very end of the Great Tribulation. Not and Yeshua will be coming. Nobody knows the day or the hour. But boy, can we see the seasons upon us. So, you know, I've said too much, maybe, maybe too much. And I haven't been able to give you all the detail that fits and makes more sense of it all. And that's my challenge to you is in prayer and and if I see that there's <clears throat> more that fits together in the coming days, I'll send out another video. But in the meantime, I just challenge you all to pray and seek God. And 
Don't try to run from what's coming. It's time to run to him. And if we're in the shadow of his wings, he'll keep us safe. He'll keep us as his children. Shalom.